Hello, welcome to our third part of this series where we are building an information security lab where we learn cybersecurity skills. So as you can see here, I still have my graph for our PFSense router. So today we're going to complete the PFSense configuration. But in addition to that, I'm also going to show you all the hardware and how it can be connected together. I have a piece of hardware that I have here. So we can actually talk about how are you going to connect this PFSense to your home network and to the lab and how is everything going to be together. Then I'll also show you a video of the lab and explain the servers and the switches that I'm using at the end. So again, we work for Trevor Phillips Industries and you are the only IT person on this company. Your job is to make sure that this company is safe. You're deploying an active directory environment. You're also deploying a bunch of servers and above all, you're going to be making sure that you do a lot of security work and make sure that everything is secure. So for you to be able to succeed in cybersecurity, you need at some point to know how all these different components work, system administration, network administration, and even some coding. So we're covering some of that in this series. We created a network diagram with a firewall. This is where we are. We are actually setting up a firewall. So by the end of today, you should know how to finish the setting up of PFSense. We installed in the previous video. You should now connect that PFSense to your local area network and also to your WAN, which is your home. And then we're going to configure this firewall with some firewall rules and the basic initial setup. So I'll show you everything in this series. Then of course we'll set up DNS and DHCP services. So this is so much fun and we're actually going to cover a lot here. But um, before we go any further, let me first show you what your setup might look like so that you can have a good idea of how you set this up in your own environment. So right here, you're looking at a simple network that might resemble your house. Your house probably has a router, something like this, or something that looks better than this, but that router is connected to the internet with, say this is connection to your internet service provider. Then you have all these open ports on that router if you haven't set up a special router in your house. And what you need to do is uh, connect one cable, like this one, Ethernet cable, RJ45, on one of these interfaces to your PFSense router. In this case, your PFSense router has two interfaces, one right here and second one. And your one for your PFSense is going to connect to your home. So your home is the, going to be the default gateway for your WAN interface. So this is uh, how we go to the internet. So you connect this one right here and you most likely get a DHCP IP address here from your home network. So your one is going to be a DHCP IP address. Then from there, you want to connect another cable to the LAN interface of your PFSense to your lab switch. So this is our lab switch, for example. Now what happens is all the IP addressing scheme that we are going to create right here is going to go straight into here. So if you have a better PFSense firewall, you can even double these and maybe create an ether channel on all those things. But for now, this is the connectivity that we have. So now everything that I connect to this switch here is going to be on my LAN. So this is a Dell laptop. So if I connected it right here, now this Dell laptop is part of the lab and between this interface and this interface, we can work with a lot of firewall rules to con control what traffic comes from here to here. So this is just for demonstration purposes. You might have a different firewall here that is not PFSense. And if you have PFSense, yours might look different. If you're visualizing your PFSense, you will notice that this is what it will look like. You will have two interfaces in your PFSense one which is going to be our LAN and one which is going to be our WAN. So these two interfaces here represent this one and this one. And these two interfaces will be connected to two different things. For example, this one will be connected to the lab, which is a private custom network here. And the other one will be connected to say your home Wi-Fi. All right, so our PFSense is at factory default right now, it just rebooted. And as you can see, I have my 
DHCP IP address here. As you can see, our LAN interface here is 192.168.1.1/24. What if we don't want this network here, 192.168.1.1/24, because this clashes with most people's homes? So let's change that. And to do that, let's um, set interface IP address by choosing option two, 192.168. Let's put 38. One. And the subnet is going to be 24. This is a slash 24 because uh, we want to keep it simple. Otherwise, uh, let's enter. IPv6, we don't, we don't have any. Do you want to enable DHCP server online? This, you want to say yes, because you want your LAN clients to get um, IP addresses. So you say yes here. Enter the start range of the IP address for your clients. I'll say 192.168.1.38. Dot, I want to start at 10 and I want to end at 192.168. So what I will do is I will reserve all the 1 to 10 for my networking gear, 200 and above for my servers. That's what I'm doing here. Do you want to revert HTTP as a web configurator protocol? Let's just say yes. So now we're enabling our DHCP server. When we connect our laptop to this in interface, we should now have a, an IP address from DHCP. And as you can see here, it says, if you go to HTTP 192.168.38.1, we should be able to access the web interface. So let's do that. 30.1. There is our PFSense login. So now we are ready to set this thing up. So we start with admin and the password is PFSense. All our case, sign in, don't save. Welcome to PFSense. So we say, sure, next. It's complaining about the default password. So we need to change that. So, but let's see, go through the setup process here. Host name. Remember, our company name is Trevor Phillips Industries. So, um, yeah, RTR01. Because just in case we have multiple in the in the future, domain is tpi.local. Let's just keep it that way. And then primary DNS server. Well, for now, let's use Google's primary DNS server. So 8.8.8 .8 .8, if you haven't used it. Then uh, for backup, let's use 8.8.4.4. .8 .4. NTP servers, I'm going to leave them the same. My time zone, I mean the central time zone here, so it's plus. So mine is central time zone. So put your correct time zone here so that you don't um, end up with the wrong time in your logs later in the future. And so let's go. Then uh, select configure one interface. We said, yeah, our one, we wanted to have DHCP. And for this lab, since I'm connected, my one is connected to my home, I'm going to remove this because I'm going to be messing with connections between my home and this lab. So I'm going to un uncheck this. You can leave them checked for, for, for your own lab. LAN IP, uh, if you if you didn't choose the right IP address range, you can uh, change it here. This is also possible. Submit mask is a slash 24, yes. Admin password, now let's change our password here. All right, next. Don't save. Click reboot to reload and save the changes now. So reload. And congratulations, you just set up uh, the first part of your PFSense. We'll come back. So let's finish uh, right here. And it says accept. Look at that. Now we have our PFSense and it's good to go. And it tells us all this information. So if you haven't used PFSense, this is a, a, a good thing. And now we can see the interfaces here. So what I like to do is I like to remove this. And then I like to add more things here. Um, I want to see traffic graphs. They're always good to see. I also like to see services. Uh, interface statistics sounds good. Then uh, I want to see services status. All right, so now I have my traffic graphs. I have my interface statistics. I can quickly see them and I can see the status. Right now with these checkboxes here, these checkboxes here show that DHCP and everything is running, which is good. We'll go to our firewall here, firewall rules. 
on the WAN interface, we, have, we don't have any rules right now. Uh, on the LAN, you have a default rule that allows any, any. I will be playing around here more. It, you'll be seeing me uh, create some rules in here. But for now, this is where things are. And if you go to status, DHCP leases, you should see that my Kali Linux got a list and it's showing me my range and DHCP is running. So if we go back here, we have a functional PFSense. So now if you connect, if this PFSense is connected to the switch, you can now go ahead and connect your, your server to the switch and the server should be getting a DHCP IP addresses in this range here. So now once you connect everything, we should be able to get going. So I promised you that I'll show you a quick overview of what my lab looks like. Right here is a 2950 Dell. You do not want to buy this thing. Don't do that. Uh, because it's just, it's, it's too loud. I have an Emission NAS device. And then we have our PowerEdge R720. I mean, this is the best thing so far. And it is this SSD drive in here. I need to add five more here and configure it in RAID format so that it works. And for our switches, I'm going to use D-Link switches, DES-1210 that are right here. So that's what I have rigged in my basement right now. And that's what we're setting up. Right up here, I have this Apple access point right here, uh, all the way at the top, the white device. And then um, the other little device that you're seeing up there, let's speed this um, thing up. This right here is a ripe probe. It, it, uh, it contributes to the internet to port connectivity. You don't need that. And this is my access point. And I'm going to install an open source Wi-Fi access point on this old Aero Hive here. So that's what we have, guys. And this is super fun. If you like this type of content and you have been enjoying this series so far, subscribe. See what we are going to de deploy in this lab. It's fun and it's exciting. And we would have a lot of exciting monitoring for security purposes in this lab. So thank you for joining me. Thank you for subscribing. I'll see you in the next video.